Let's have another look at audio compression for your dialogue for film and video, this time going a little bit more in depth and with a focus on keeping it sounding as natural as possible. Compression of dialogue audio requires a little bit of finesse to really be effective, and while learning, I've sometimes ended up with over-compressed audio that ended up sounding a little bit like this. This is a sample clip to demonstrate what over-compressed audio sounds like. So <laughs> I'm recording here with the Rode. Okay, so you can see that is not necessarily pretty. So the first question is, why would you ever want to compress your dialogue audio? And I think it boils down to one thing, and that is, the audio should help tell your story without making it hard for your audience. So it really allows you to loudness normalize to any sort of established broadcast standard or recommendation so your audience doesn't have to strain to hear it or experience the pain of audio that's too loud or distorted. And especially for those that are going to be distributing their programs to mobile devices or distribute on the web, where the playback hardware is not gonna be that awesome. <laughs> Doing this loudness normalization is pretty important. So the, again, so your audience can really just hear and the audio doesn't distract at all, but just really adds to the overall story. Now we have covered audio compression a fair bit in the past, but in this case, I want to talk about it in just a little bit more detail so we can refine our skills just a touch and really sort of avoid those issues with over compression and things of that nature. So the first thing that I like to do when I bring an audio clip in is see if I even need to compress it at all. I've noticed that some people's voices really don't require any compression at all. It also depends a little bit on your microphone and other things, but what I'll do is just drag my sample audio clip down into the match volume panel here. If you don't have that, you can go up to window and match volume, make sure that's checked. Again, we're using Adobe Audition CC, which is the 2014.2 release in this case. And once we've done that, we'll go ahead and loudness normalize. Now, in this particular case, my target is going to be distributed. This is going to be distributed on the web as part of a video on the web. So my goal is to loudness normalize it to minus 19 LUFS because I have a mono audio clip. If I had a stereo audio clip, I just normalize to minus 16 LUFS. That's the recommendation at present for for material that'll be played back either on mobile devices or on the web. So that's just one thing I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and run that and it loudness normalizes it. And what I'm looking for here is to see if any of my peaks get chopped off here at the bottom or the top at zero dB. So you can see that some of them did get chopped off here, especially this one here. So what this tells me is that I do need to do a little bit of compression before I can loudness normalize. So that's great. That's what I was looking for. Sometimes if your audio looks like this, you know that you'll need to do even more compression before you're ready to loudness normalize. So that's just sort of a diagnostic thing. Let's go ahead and back up. Here's our original audio again. Now, there are a few things to consider here. And in this case, again, I'm using Adobe Audition. I'm gonna use some uh, different effects than I've used before in the past. In the past, we've always stuck with the kind of built-in effects, like this single band compressor. Here, I'm gonna branch out a little bit more because I wanna show you some features that are included in other compressors that don't come with Adobe Audition that are a little bit more advanced. Some of these are going to be available in free plugins, and we'll put a link to a couple of them down below. And if you know of some that are available as well that are you know, relatively affordable or no cost free, go ahead and put those in the comments down below. We're gonna go ahead and use this Isotope Ozone 6 Dynamics, which again is a compressor, it's a pretty fancy one, but I'll call out any features that are not included in the built-in compressor in Audition. All right, so this is a multi-band compressor, first of all. That's not going to be terribly important to us, but just to describe that, it has the ability to separately compress the bass or low-frequency stuff, the mid-range material, which is where most dialogue actually falls, and then the high-frequency or treble separate from each other. So we're just going to focus on this mid-range here. This has the familiar controls, threshold, which is sort of the the limit at where at which the compressor starts to kick in. As soon as our waveform exceeds this, it'll start to compress it. And we'll come back to that in just a minute here. All right, we have our familiar ratio. And again, this is how much it compresses it. And we have our attack and release. Again, we'll cover those in just a little bit more detail. We have a new setting here, which is not available in the built-in compressor called knee. And this allows us to apply what's called a soft knee. We'll come back to that in just a minute and show you what that looks like. Let's first of all focus on this little graph here because this is showing us visually what the compressor is going to do. 
And this axis here on the bottom, the x-axis, shows us our input amplitude. So just a quick review, amplitude is how tall these waveforms get, and the taller they are, the louder they are. Um, the technical term is amplitude though, so we're gonna use that. And so what this refers to is the input amplitude, the amplitude of your audio clip as it start, you know, as you first bring it into audition. And in this particular case here, you can you can see here there's this thing right here it says c this is actually our threshold right there if i take this off it's just a little dot there and you can see i can change that by moving the threshold here so we're going to put that at minus 15 or so um, what you notice here especially if i apply a pretty strong ratio so if if i have audio that's coming in and it's at minus 15 db or louder so maybe minus five up in this range this is the output level this is what the compressor is going to do to it so if it comes in and we're at minus eight let's use that as an example it comes in at minus eight it's actually going to be output at about minus 15. so it's really really compressing it pretty much pretty hard so it's it's reducing the amplitude of that particular peak that passes this threshold well the problem is a couple of things number one First, I'm using a really extreme ratio, and we talked about this last time. I, for dialogue, I like to keep it at two to, two to one or less, you know, something fairly mild there, if you can. If you start getting to something like this, it's gonna sound pretty unnatural. Now, this can be really useful for effects, but for normal, natural dialogue, you're not probably gonna to wanna to compress that hard. But the other problem is, is there's this very distinct threshold. So as soon as the audio amplitude passes the threshold, it suddenly gets compressed in a very sort of linear fashion. And that doesn't necessarily sound natural. So this knee, which I talked about before, actually can help change that a little bit. Watch as I apply some knee here. You can see instead of it being an abrupt linear type of relationship, there's now this curvilinear relationship. And all that means is that it's now compressing, it is applying the compression in a more natural fashion. It actually doesn't have this one break off point at which it starts compressing, it actually starts to gently apply it, even down lower here, and uh, it curves a little bit more and applies a little bit more as it gets louder. So that's what the knee is all about. Again, this is not available in the built-in compressor in Adobe Audition, either of them, um, but you can find this in some free plugins. And again, I'll leave links for those down below. And if you know of any, I've let us know about those as well. So again, just coming back and reviewing from last time, ratio I like to keep at two to one or less. And I do like to apply a knee because that helps make it a little bit more natural. In terms of attack and release, let's talk about those. Attack is how long the compressor waits after the waveform has exceeded the threshold before it kicks in. And this is a very short time, two milliseconds. I like to keep that pretty short for dialogue. And um, what this means is it's gonna let two milliseconds of the waveform go through before it starts compressing. So we wanna keep that short. Typically I'd like to leave this somewhere between zero and maybe 20 milliseconds. So you can experiment with that. If you start pushing up closer to 20, you're not gonna be able to kind of push these peaks down as quickly. So if, again, we're trying to kind of compress those a little bit so that we can loudness normalize, so that's something to keep in mind. So in this case, I'll leave that at about two milliseconds. Release time is on the other end. So once the waveform comes back down below the threshold, this is how quickly the compressor turns off and stops compressing. So this for dialogue audio, I like to leave this somewhere between 80, about 80 and 150, somewhere in there. Um, if you make this too short, too quick, you'll get a pumping sound. So the compressor will become very kind of fidgety. And as soon as that threshold, as soon as the waveform comes down below the threshold, it'll turn off immediately and it'll be very, very obvious. So typically that's why I like to leave this at between 80 and 150. If you make it too long, what'll happen is it'll end up just staying on. The compressor will be always on <laughs> and compressing everything. So it's kind of a balancing act there. Again, for dialogue, usually between 80 and 150. So we'll just put it somewhere right around there for now. Now, this compressor has something that's kind of nice. It has this adaptive release feature. So this is only something that's available on more sophisticated compressors. And what this does is instead of just relying on this release here, it actually looks at the waveform ahead of the playhead, it actually reads ahead, and it decides when it needs to let go of the compression to get the most natural sound. So that's something you can use as well without getting too technical about it. Now there's one other thing that I wanted to talk about here, and that is what is called the control law, or some people call the control law. Most compressors are peak threshold compressors. What that means is that they're just looking at the, uh, the waveform and checking to see if the peak exceeds the threshold that you've set. And as soon as it does, 
it starts kicking in based on the other parameter settings you use here. So that's kind of the traditional way of doing it. There is another way of doing it called RMS. Now RMS, again, I don't wanna to get too technical here, but, and I don't entirely understand all of this myself, but RMS stands for root mean square. And in short, it's a way of averaging things out. So again, this is another way to make the compressor so it's not so fidgety but to sort of average over time and just in a more smooth way, kind of apply the compressor and release the compressor over time. So again, can be a more natural sound that way. So I like to use that. This one also has a one step farther called the envelope control law. And this is actually even more intelligent than RMS rather than just averaging. It does some additional look ahead type things. And I don't understand all the details on that one, but <laughs> that's another thing you can do to help ensure that the compression sounds very natural. All right, once we've got all those set, let's go ahead and apply that and see what happens to our waveform here. Now, again, just in terms of setting the threshold, what I did is I looked at it and I said, okay, 15 is about where I wanna set it. So anything above this window right here is gonna be affected by the compressor. So we're gonna kind of hopefully gently pull all these back in. So let's go ahead and apply it and see what happens. Okay, you can see it has definitely brought some of those peaks in. So we have something that's a little bit more even now. The question is, was that enough to actually loudness normalize? Let's go ahead and run again our match volume here, which will do our loudness normalization to minus 19 LUFS. We'll run that. And did any of our peaks clip? Well, it looks like one may have right here. So let's undo that. What we can do is actually, rather than do another round of compression, I might just come in here and highlight this one little peak, just like that. Pull that in just a little bit, reduce the amplitude like that. Now, when I loudness normalize, that one does not get clipped. And that is generally how I go about this. Now, I would actually do one last thing here, just to make sure I catch everything. I'm gonna come over here to the amplitude statistics. If you don't have that in your UI, you can come to window and make sure the amplitude statistics is checked. Go ahead and scan the audio. And what this tells me here is, okay, first of all, yes, we loudness normalized to minus 19 LUFS, so that's good. What we also have to do is make sure that our true peak amplitude is smaller than or lower than minus one dB true peak. We're actually not yet. We're at minus 40. So I might actually, and I, you know, if you click this little arrow here, it'll show us where. So this one technically is exceeding that, which is kind of funny. Um, but there are some others too. I, th I bet you this one is as well. So what I would do here is come into effects, amplitude and compression. Let's do a hard limiter. Again, we're not going to affect things too much if we go ahead and hard limit those. So I'm going to just go ahead and set this to minus 1.2 dB. Leave the other settings at their def. Well, actually make sure that the input boost is at zero. <laughs> Look ahead time seven and release time 100 milliseconds. Apply that run the statistics again. Now you can see I'm at minus 1.16 dB true peak. So that's where I wanna be again, lower than minus one. So we're good there. Our loudness is still at minus 19 LUFS and let's go ahead and do a before and after. This quick clip will demonstrate one of the things that I find oftentimes is that some talent have a tendency to speak really loud at the start of a sentence and then get quieter and quieter and quieter and quieter as the sentence goes on. Okay, and this is after compression and loudness normalization. This quick clip will demonstrate one of the things that I find oftentimes is that some talent have a tendency to speak really loud at the start of a sentence and then get quieter and quieter and quieter and quieter as the sentence goes on. Okay, so I hope you found that helpful. Go ahead and leave questions you may have down below or any parts of this process you want to dig into in more detail. Obviously, I would do some additional things here in terms of fin you know, finishing this audio. I have some pretty loud breaths in here, so I'd probably address some of those issues. If I had any noise, I might do a little bit of denoising. I might do some EQ and other things along that line. But that's kind of the general idea in terms of the compression part of my po audio post processing. I hope you found that helpful. Thanks for checking out this episode. If you have any questions, leave those down below. And if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great weekly episodes on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.